So why do we get dermatophytosis in our domestic animals? There are a few factors that we've got to think about when we're looking at why does a cat or a dog develop dermatophytosis in the first place. We know that host status comes into it. So uh, the situation of the, the dog or cat, uh, certainly in cats, is there any FELV or FIV status? Is it on any medication like steroid that may lower its immunity and make it more prone to picking up infection? Um, host immunity to, to dermatophytosis is also important and we know that certain individuals certain breeds are much more prone to dermatophytosis than others and we'll talk about that in more detail as we go through the webinar of course the actual dose of uh, organism is important you know one or two spores a cat or a dog may cope with larger numbers may cause problems and then of course we know that um, in uh, in warmer environments we see a lot more dermatophytosis than in colder environments as well. So it can depend on uh, humidity, uh, on, as they say, occlusive conditions. So if, if hair is stuck all together, if there's uh, humid areas on the body, then that's probably more prone to getting uh, dermatophytosis as well. So clinical signs, certainly we can see, um, you know, cats may lose hair. Uh, there may be scale, erythema, and hyperpigmentation. And we've got a cat there. This this uh, picture is courtesy of David Bentley. Uh, I, when As I went through my uh, collection of photographs, I realized that I, I haven't taken enough photographs of dermatophytosis. But also, as a referring vet, I don't see huge amounts of it because, you know, it is not as common as, as pyoderma or allergic disease. So I don't see a lot of it. Obviously, if you're working in with lots of catteries, rescue centers, you're much more likely to see it. So you should be aware of it. Uh, you want to always, you know, be, be looking for the symptoms and then obviously doing the relevant tests. Uh, the dog on the bottom was a dog that I saw uh, that had trichophytes and mentagrophytes and was probably caught. This was a, a dog that uh, went down holes ratting, had probably been caught from you know, a, a wild species. These are some photographs that I've borrowed from the Janssen publications. Again, just to give you some more uh, areas that you can look at uh, to see some pictures of how, how dermatophytosis can present in dogs and in cats. So we see scale there, we see erythema, we see hyperpigmentation, we see quite a high degree of alopecia in the dog on the uh, extreme right over here and these can be you know quite severe conditions and it is important in those conditions to consider doing fungal cultures in cats as you see we can often see um, erythema areas of alopecia you'll notice that is a long-haired cat long-haired cats do seem to be more prone to this disease than short-haired cats because it takes a lot longer for the dermatophyte to grow out and of course, uh, when it sheds its hair, it, it really is producing a lot of infection into the environment as well. And you can see there crusts and erythema on the uh, on the cat on the right, there and there. Classic round lesions, as we said, are actually quite rare. And you'll notice, I think this is a a, a, a sphinx cat, so it it is naturally bald. But uh, it is always a good idea to clip these cats so that you can see the lesions more. And of course, at the same time, you're reducing the infective load of hair that's affecting both the cat, affecting both the cat and the environment. Uh, 